One thing I want to ask you about, because it's a topic near and dear to your heart. Look, listen, obviously part of this I got from some of the Western courts. You've noticed this, but also people like Nelson, where they have an obvious bias in this sense, right? Yeah. Years and years ago, Clement, I said as a half joke, back when we used to have all those MSIs, and every single time the Flash Wolves would just beat whatever the number one Korean team was. If it was T1, they'd go to Worlds, they could beat like Rocks Tigers. And I always used to say, this doesn't make any sense, because like people understand like maybe like LPL should be LCK if it was the best teams you know but at the time everyone considered LMS to have like no money like worse infrastructure so my joke back in the day was if LPL wants to beat LCK why don't they just get all the Flash Wolves coaches now I meant it as a joke Clement but when you go and look now like some of like the top six teams in the LPL they're just littered with LMS coaches like what's this like invasion of LMS coaches to the LPL now it seems to have been a game changer uh, I, I I think someone heard you on that and they probably just followed your advice and it's really been to the detriment of the LMS. Like, uh, RIP, it doesn't even exist anymore. That's true. Uh, <laughs> but I, I felt like uh, a lot of these, uh, what what these coaches were really good at is I, I felt like they came from an environment, and I, I've said this a lot of times, uh, where the, the, the level of difference between coaches and players was a lot more equitable. So the coaches right. were not more afterthoughts. They were actually linchpins in the team's constructions. And, um, you, you know, well, like in the old days uh, when you had a Chinese coach, not, not, not a Korean coach, um, the, the salary difference between a coach and a player could be up to like 100 times. And, you know, there was, it was very hard to control. And it was very hard to, you know, when you have a coaching clash between a player and a coach, most of the times it would be sided with the player, uh, especially if you had Korean imports that were demanding yes. like very, very high salaries. And what I think the difference was with uh, most of the LMS coaches going over is that, you know, they are coming in where I, I, I felt like, um, especially, I, I think the best example of this was FBX. Because FBX, they actually had a GM who I, I think is incredibly smart. He used to be the actually league ops for Riot China. And um, he just quit his job one day and said, you know what? I can't stand watching the LPL lose to Korean teams over and over again. I am going to get my own team. I'm going to coach my own team. And he actually won Worlds in one split. So <laughs> that's, that's that that was insane. Uh, I knew him as a really, really smart guy. And I, I think more GMs should be doing this where they are factoring the coach's history and building a team from a ground up considering... Um, what the coach has done before. And that's exactly what they did with Fun Plus Phoenix. Now, if you go back in time and look at Fun Plus Phoenix before Doinby, there are basically a bunch of players that were past their prime. They were a middling playoff team with no real prospects of even being a serious contender. And then this guy, one guy comes in, um, he gets Doinby, of course. That was a very long story. They had to pursue him uh, for a very, very long time, up his salary, all of that stuff. And then they got the coach from Flash Wolves, who was, uh, who's, uh, can't forget his, I know his name in Chinese, a war horse, the war horse. War horse, yes, of course. Yes. yes. And I, I think it was really smart because they gave the coach a lot of leeway to build the team, and they also factor in what he did in the past. Now, the way I view players and coaches is, I, I think we tend to, and this is a thing about, like, I, I put a lot of thought in between East, the difference between esports and physical sports is that the players don't actually have a physical attribute that ties them down to a specific play style. Like, you, okay. you can't really transition a seven footer into a, a point guard. Sure. But it, in esports, the way it works is that I think players are not really that separable from the systems that they used to play in. So um, there is a definitely trend where you can see how these players match up. And I think a huge thing where FBX was very successful was was they got a, a coach from the LMS and he instituted a system that was very, very much similar to the way that uh, Flash Wolves used to play. It was actually almost a carbon copy in terms of their bread and butter play, which was the 4v2 tower dive. You know, you bring Maple Carson into the bot lane. Same thing, you bring, bring Doin BTN into the bot lane. Yes. It doesn't really matter how good your bot lane is. LWX is not top carry material sure. by any means, even in the LPL, but they, but they made it work. And I think that has really started a revolution. So we have seen teams like WE, I think, with Domo, most, uh, most notably, where he brought a very young G-Rex team by bending the team around their weaknesses. This is especially what Domo loves to do. He brings up the floor of the team. He doesn't really bring up the ceiling. The ceiling is still there. Like, uh, WE had to change a lot of players before they could advance. But they brought up the ceiling, they made sure they covered their weaknesses in Teacher Ma, and they got into uh, a very, very comfortable spot where they were sixth place in multiple splits with a roster that nobody thought they could do it. And I think uh, the GMs in LPR are getting a lot smarter. 
they are understanding that a lot of times getting a coach that can communicate directly with your players, which is the case between LMS and uh, LPL coaches and players because they all speak Mandarin, is incredibly invaluable. And they also understand that, you know, sometimes a more equitable system where the, the difference between coaches and, and players um, is actually beneficial to a team because there's more chemistry, there's more back and forth. And I, I, I think it's a great system, you know, it, it pretty much guts the L, the, the PCS. I don't think the PCS has a great shot because of sure. uh, the yes. magnetic sort of uh, effect that the LPL has. And I think the same thing can be said of the LCK as well, but props to the LPL. They've definitely uh, made that to their advantage. Sure. Because I even think about like how few people in the West even know who the big coaches are in the e Asian region. They basically just know Korma. Anyone who's been in T1, basically Korma, Zephyr, they know a few people, right? Yeah. They don't know almost any of the LPL coaches. And I have to say, by the way, along the lines of what you said at the end there, listen, LCK has some good coaches. May LPL has the best coaches in the world as well. Just look at the collection of people. Look what they've done over the last few years. It's ridiculous how many elite teams there are. Want to see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe. Subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.